let me welcome to the show Kimberla Lawson Roby, amazing author. Um, thank you for coming in last minute, uh, reaching out to you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you for even thinking of me. And, you know, today is a really, really tough day. And this, this last couple of days, because he actually just passed away on Sunday. And I heard the news yesterday, and then they were waiting for the formal announcement. But I have not been this heartbroken about a brother in the industry, as you know, since Elon Harris. And uh, of course, you, as you mentioned, you published his last book. So you can imagine we had many conversations uh, about that with him even and how grateful he was to you. Uh, and then now, Eric, there were no two other authors in the industry that supported me and cared about me and gave me the advice that I needed more than the two of them. That's the thing, you know, Drew and I are talking about institutional knowledge and the sharing of the things we know. Um, Elon Harris was notorious for, uh, you know, supporting with his dollar, with his advice. Same with yeah. Eric Jerome Dickey. But uh, that glory period in publishing was about the community. You know, when I talk about, yeah. you know, you and Victoria and Rashonda and I mean, it was a community of folk and y'all were competing at the same time. Y'all putting out some dope ass books, but working together as well like y'all would tour together it was it was beautiful to watch it was you know i didn't really you know do novels i did mostly nonfiction. but watching uh -huh. y'all you know in the community that you're talking about talk, give us give us a story somebody may not know about eric jerome dickey well how i even met eric this has always been very interesting to me when i self-published my first book it was in the fall of 1996 and sort of connected with all of the african-american bookstores because we had hundreds of course at that time and that just made it that much more uh, of a value to all of us because we were able to go into communities support black bookstores they were able to get the word out to our readers and i ended up doing an event and eric was there i was on a panel but i didn't know him i knew of him and had already been reading his books and so at the end of the event i didn't know whether i could say something to him or not i'm just being very honest because I had already reached out to some other authors who were already in the industry and hadn't heard anything. So you just kind of a little timid about it. But he saw me getting ready to leave. And he said, Kimberly Lawson Roby, he said, I know you're not going to leave without speaking to me. And I'm already talking up your book to people. And it was just like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, I was stunned out of this world. And we just became great friends from that moment. And so my husband and Will, my husband Will and I have been talking about one time I was on book tour not too long after that, this is just a few years after I met him, we were in California and I had gotten very sick. I had become very ill, couldn't go out and about. And so he called us up and he would talk to Will, of course, as well. And so then he just said, well, Kim, I'm sorry. He said, but why should Will have to be stuck in the hotel room just because you can't go out? And we kind of laughed about it. He picked Will up, they went and had lunch, and but that's just who he was. He cared about people. He was, of course, a tremendously super talented writer, but he was just one of the best people that I have ever known. Hey, uh, this is uh, Andrew McCaskill uh, here, contributor here on the Karen Hunter Show. And mm -hmm. I, when I think about uh, authors at that time, and it seems like the, a big fraternity and sorority of folks, you know, because you travel and selling your books in different places and doing book tours and, and hitting those black bookstores and things like that. Can you talk a little bit about just the way you all thought about each other or how you supported each other? I know you talked about that. He said, I was t just talking up your book. Did y'all feel like y'all were competing or was it, or was it truly like a, a brotherhood and a sisterhood of folks having that same experience? No, it was. It was truly a brotherhood and sisterhood. And so sometimes, as Karen was saying, we would all travel around and do some of the same events. But even if we were on tour, for example, if I went to a city where Victoria was, if it was where Eric was, where it was Rashonda was, I was likely going to see them at my events and vice versa. If they came into Illinois and I was able to get over to Chicago, those were the events I was looking to go to, even if I had already read their books, obviously, because they were friends of mine, but it was just a support system. And so if someone said to me, Kimberly, I read your books, can you recommend others? Well, all of those names are going to be the first names that I've mentioned. And so it was a community. It was 
a family that we had outside of our biological families, and it just was incomparable to anything that that I could even try to, um, you know, bring out and think about that could even compare to it at all. But it was just a love and a connection that I didn't even expect to have in publishing at that time. I don't want to even say favorite book um, <laughs> because that's not fair. That's not fair. Mm -hmm. But if if people mm -hmm. are listening right now and they're not familiar with Eric Jerome Dickey, what mm -hmm. which book would you recommend as the best introduction into his? I into think his milk, genius? milk in my coffee is one mm. of my all time favorite books of Eric's, and Sister Sister would probably be my second. Okay, all right. So that's one of his first. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what was what was genius about him? from from as a writer writer to writer oh my gosh he he loved words and it was very apparent that he loved words he studied and he never stopped studying if i had to guess even within just probably this last month if there was something that eric could learn about writing about the technique of writing about the craft of writing he was still doing it and so he would write and rewrite and rewrite and sometimes if if you just pick up any of his books now to me, he was the one of the authors I knew of that no matter what page you turned to, there was likely going to be some sentence that you wanted to reread so that you wouldn't forget it. You wanted to read it because it really mm. stood out um, in your mind. And so it wouldn't matter what page or what book you were reading. He really was that talented. 59 years old. That's way too young. He was an aer yes. aerospace uh, industry worker before he got into this, a software developer before he pursued his dream, which is another thing, you know, life is short. You know, there, there are many yeah. of us in jobs right now that uh, we hate, <laughs> and you know, we got to pay the bills, but there, there's yeah. something God put us on this earth to do. And while you're working that job, I mean, Elon was an IBM salesman, you know, yeah. I, I forgot what you were doing before you started writing because you were doing I, something I worked too. it for government and also for corporate before I became a writer. When I saw it today, I was like, are you what? Are you kidding me? Somebody put it on my timeline in Twitter. And I was like, how? How? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's shocking. It's, it's, uh, I think uh, his passing has, it has hit our industry. Uh, not since Elin have we felt this way. And so it's a major loss. It's a tremendous loss to all of us. Every day we have on this earth, we got to spend it doing the things we need to do so i just want to thank you for uh being obedient uh to to honor what is put inside of you to do kimberla lawson roby you're amazing i appreciate you thank you for being here today thank you so much karen thanks so much oh man uh drew when we come back i didn't even know that karen i honestly didn't know i i, I hadn't seen that i hadn't seen that on my timeline at all that, that he had passed away so i'm i'm gobsmacked that I mean, I was, you know, it's interesting because his name kept coming up when, um, when at the height of Black Panther too, because he was, he was one of the first Black authors to be given the mandate by Marvel to write right. Black Panther, right? Like he did That's a graphic right. novel right. on Storm that incorporated, you know, T'Challa in the, in the narrative or whatever. And, you know, of course, ta Coates has done amazing with, you know, with, Black Panther over the over the years, but Eric Jerome Dickey was was one of the first Black authors to get entrusted with the Black Panther, um, with the Black Panther narrative from Marvel, which I, I was, you know I felt like never never got talked about at all during the Black Panther you know you know full full court press too. If that we as, you know, black folks maybe didn't even know that. Right. Or remember and, it. No, and it's true. And for him to die and it take two days for for people to I'm I'm like, what the hell? And and but it, it underscores if we do not tell our stories and if we do not yeah. honor our ancestors and if we do not praise the people and give them their flowers, the folks that are doing great work, thinking somebody else is going to. We have to say their name and we have to honor them and we have to do the thing that needs to be done so that they are never forgotten, that they can't just be washed over 100 years from now. This name should still be in, the, in everyone's, the top of everyone's list when you bring up these things. That's why, you know, the, the work that I'm telling you about that I did over the holiday is about the spider web of connection. 
so that yeah. no, you know we're gonna weave in all they're not hidden figures they're just figures people don't talk about because yeah. when we when we live a life through somebody else's lens they're always going to ignore the things that might be important to us because it's not important to them and mm -hmm. there's no disrespect mm -hmm. i mean we're gonna highlight the things that matter to us when we have the ability to do that when we have the platforms in the community and the the license to do that so let's grab the licenses and let's yeah. build and create the platforms. That's why I was saying, you know, Tim Reed is doing something. There's other people out there. All the platforms need to be out there because among those platforms, we're going to get many different perspectives, which is what we see when we look at network, when we look at all these streaming platforms. They, they all give us a little something different and they all have a place. So why do yeah. we only need one space? <laughs> it's not enough. All right. It's we not enough. It is not enough. We have so much history and so many stories and so many people to honor. People who are who are living as who are currently living as well as people who are dead. And it can't it can't just be NAACP. And it, but it, it but NAACP is important. It can't just be essence. But essence is important, right? I I yeah, this man had you know thirty books that I think all but two were on New York Times list, but we also gotta gotta make sure that we elevate the fact that, you know, he won a literary award on behalf of NAACP too, so that we talk about like when our black organizations celebrate us, mention it in the same sentence as what everybody else. Or or the first those other, the or, first yeah. part of that sentence, because it's yeah. equally if not more important. How about that? Yeah. yeah. The ice water is not colder. I'm sorry. It's just ice.